Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all very much. And good afternoon. And I thank you also for honoring us with your visit here today. Some of you have just told me before I came in here that you're praying for me. And I want you to know that I think I'm very much aware of that. I have a feeling I'm getting help almost all the time I'm here, and, and that's where it's coming from. I want you to know in this short time we're together how grateful we are for the good and important work that you are doing. And believe me, if I could assign times by how important uh, meetings are, yours would be a lot longer than it's going to be. It should be the longest. Many of those that I have to have could be a lot shorter. <laughs> but I can't sp express strongly enough that what you're doing is important, is necessary, and is right. And as long as I'm president, you and others who stand up for our Judeo-Christian traditions and values will be welcome here because you belong here. Now, of course, if you could help register a few million voters, and I understand you're doing exactly that, then maybe you could send a message of thunder from the grassroots that no one in Washington could ignore. I know that some people in this town seem to delight in pretending that you don't exist, but please listen to me when I say you are not alone. In fact, maybe it's, uh, uh, maybe it's time we, we let them in on a little secret. We have the majority of the American people, and together, and met together, we should make it clear that America's, where America's heart is, because that's where power lies, real power. No matter where I go, no greater truth shines through than the one you seek to live by each day. Preserving America must begin with faith in the God who has blessed this land. We... We don't have the answers. He has the answers. And the sooner we can accept that simple fact, the wiser and better off we'll all be. Isaiah reminded us that the Lord opens his gates and keeps in peace a nation that trusts in him. And you are trying to restore to their place of honor those bedrock values handed down by families and churches to serve as society's compass. Our time-tested values have never failed us when we've had the courage to live up to them. And I think you're beginning to succeed. I think we're seeing signs that America is stronger economically and, yes, stronger spiritually, too. And maybe that's why we're stronger economically. By the end of the 1970s, millions of American families had seen the golden promise of the American dream destroyed by runaway inflation, taxes, and interest rates. The rate of price increases is down to 3.6% in the last three months, but I'm not going to be satisfied until it's zero. We passed a tax rate reduction that's helped parents by reducing by over $900 a year the tax bill that would have been owed by the typical American family. But I want you to know that greater tax fairness for families and greater tax incentives for families will be key considerations in the proposals that are being developed to simplify our tax system. I know that rendering unto Caesar what is Caesar's should not be virtually impossible without legal help. I believe there has been and continues to be a great hunger in America for a moral and spiritual revival. George Gallup Jr. has noticed a strong and welcome trend in his surveys, a burgeoning of interest in religion, a searching, he says, for spiritual moorings, a desire for a deeper understanding of one's faith. Well, we've been seeing signs that 
family life is making a comeback. We're remembering that with freedom comes personal and parental responsibility. And we're remembering that it's not enough to wish others well by supporting a more benevolent government. Tolerance, kindness, and love begin at home, in our own lives, in our own families, and in our own communities. And I think all this is beginning to have a profound impact on us as a people, on the character of our nation, and on the destiny of America. Crime rates have been dropping. Divorce rates have been dropping. And I assure you that this administration is determined to make all-out war against the evil people who use drugs and pornography to prey on our families and on our loved ones. We're making progress, but all that we've done is only a fraction of what needs to be done. How can we rest? How can we be satisfied? knowing that the God who's blessed our land has been expelled from our children's schoolrooms. We cannot and we will not. If enough of us pray together, stand together and work together, then the gates of resistance will fall. And we'll see the day when freedom of voluntary vocal prayer has been restored to every classroom in America. Who knows, if we get God and discipline back in our schools, maybe we can get drugs and violence out. <laughs> Neither can we rest, nor can the conscience of America be at peace when the lives of over 4,000 unborn children are being snuffed out every day, and I have a feeling that someone else has been talking to you on this subject already. 4,000 children who will never laugh, sing, never know the joy of Human love will never strive to heal the sick, feed the poor, or make peace among nations. So let us go forth with peaceful but renewed determination, knowing that no challenge is more important than restoring the right to life, for without that right, no other rights have any meaning at all. I've been accused of oversimplifying things, but on this particular subject, I wonder if we haven't overlooked a kind of simple answer. That the Constitution already provides this elimination of this manner of, of killing. There were great hearings before the Congress, before committees, just a couple of years ago, on the matter of abortion and when does life begin. And at the end of all the testimony by all the edic experts from every side that could be interested in this, including the medical, there was not one shred of evidence introduced that the unborn were not truly living human beings. And until and unless someone can establish without a doubt that they are not alive, then the Constitution of this country protects their life, their liberty, and their pursuit of happiness. said on that unforgettable night in a patriotic rally at Madison Square Garden during World War II, the world champion, then a buck private at $54 a month, walked out on the stage. There'd been a lot of talk about our relationship with God during that wartime meeting, but he was the first and only one that put it this way. We'll win because we're on God's side. Everybody put it the other way around. Well, within our families and communities, let's continue to reach out, to strive for a spirit of friendship and fellowship among people and nations, and among all who share our lives and our dreams for a better world. And let us remember that the blessings of liberty we enjoy do not belong to us alone. They are gifts of God to men and women everywhere, and we have a duty to support all who struggle for freedom. I just think you would be interested in one little bulletin. Not too long ago, I went out to Colorado Springs, and 
address the graduating class of the Air Force Academy. All those cadets, 993 of them, the biggest graduating class in our history. And I stood and shook 993 hands. <laughs> but what warmed my heart, even though it surprised me somewhat, was the great percentage of them that in the few seconds we had as we were shaking hands went out of their way to tell me something about their belief in God, in prayer, and their dedication to religion. These are going to be the officers in our Air Force and are already now since their graduation, young men and women of our country. I was overwhelmed and later I mentioned it to the commanding general and he said every morning at 6.30, there are two religious services every morning. And he says every morning there are anywhere from 600 to 800 cadets in there worshiping. <laughs> well, I thank you for what you're doing and thank you for your faith. And I really only told you that last little incident there so, because everybody needs to know that when they're being successful, and you are being successful. Thank you for the victory of principles and ideals. I know you will win, and that all Americans will share. And God bless you all. <laughs>